Can God change your life in the next 30 minutes? I believe you're watching right now because God has something special for you. Join me for Jewish Voice and you'll discover how Bible prophecy is coming to pass before our very eyes and why you need to stand with Israel. You can play a role in God's end time plan. Find out how on Jewish Voice. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, where we help you to understand the Jewish roots of your Christian faith, Bible prophecy, and why you should stand with Israel. I'm Rabbi Jonathan Burnus. Well, my guest today is no stranger to most of you. He's a pioneer in messianic worship. I hope you've heard him before. Out, just an outstanding minstrel, and uh, he proclaims the Word of God with power. He's a dear friend of mine. Please welcome back to Jewish Voice, Paul Wilbur. Paul, it's so good to have you. Thunderous applause in the audience. It's <laughs> wonderful. Hey, uh, we were just reminiscing. We met 35 years ago. 35, I was a young pastor. I was just starting out in Rochester, New York. I actually had hair back then. Mm. Not much, but I had some, right? Mm. Uh, and uh, you were a, a pioneer in, in what we call Messianic Jewish praise and worship. You were with Israel's Hope. You've launched out. You have a worldwide ministry now. Help us understand what is messianic praise and worship? How is it different from any other style of worship? Mm. Well, um, not to make uh, comparisons, but for us in the messianic world, it's all about the king. You know, yes. we, we call it messianic because it's about the Messiah. So, you know, and a lot of praise and worship music you hear a lot of pronouns like I, me, my needs, what you can do for me today, how poor I am, or whatever. And so um, messianic music for us as we take it right out of the scriptures, the prophetic words, the Psalms, the prophets, uh, the words of Jesus, Yeshua himself, and, and set it to music because nobody says it better that's an old song somewhere. Nobody does. Nobody <laughs> says it better than the Word of God. And so we lift those things right out, set them to music, invite His presence because Psalm 22, 3, He inhabits the praises of His people. And yes, technically it may have a more of an ancient sound or a Middle Eastern sound, but the lyrics and what it's transferring and who it invites to me, is the real earmark of Messianic yeah, I, music. For me, I think there's a prophetic dimension to this. We're proclaiming God's promises yet to be fulfilled for a specific people that tie into God's plan for the whole world. So it's it, it, the restoration of Israel, Paul, and the restoration of the Jewish roots of the faith to the body of Christ, to the body of Messiah, are prophetic. Are you, what are you seeing out there? You're traveling the world. Mm -hmm. you're, you're on the cutting edge of this. What are you seeing? Well, we just came from Paris um, in a huge church of 12 to 15,000. In Europe, that's unbelievable. In, in France, in that's France. miraculous. In France. Wow. And they asked me to come and do a half an hour with a band. I mean, they, they paid for it. the travel and the band, and, all, and they wanted 30 minutes of happy, clappy, uh, end of the year, get us into the new year with praise. And that was my job. What wound up was two and a half hours of worship in French, Hebrew, and English to the point where the church is saying, we went places in the spirit we've never been before. Please come back. This is your home. Take us to Israel. We want to know more about how to be connected with the Jewish wow. people. And and the week before that, we were in West Africa where, Jonathan, the same thing happened. We have entered, I believe, a whole new time. Acts 3, verse 21 says, He, Jesus, Yeshua, must remain in heaven until the time for all things to be restored. Now, I know that there is a time where that will ultimately happen when He returns, thousand-year reign, and then the new heavens and the new earth. There is an ultimate fulfillment of that. But Jonathan, I really believe for what we're seeing in the nations now, we have entered into this time 
of restoration of all things that lead up to the return of Yeshua. This is huge. I don't want you to miss this, okay? I want to put it back on the screen. It actually says that Jesus, Yeshua, is, is waiting in the heavenlies. He's, he's ready to come back, but he's waiting in the heavenlies until a set time with a set group of, of, of events mm -hmm. that have to take place, mm -hmm. the restoration of all things. So, Paul, right. let's, let's expound on that more because this is mm -hmm. critical. If you want Jesus to return, then this is important. Mm -hmm. This is where it ties into why, why me? Right. Why should I care about Israel and the Jewish people? Unpack this a little bit. What mm. is the restoration of all things? So there are things that have been over this millennia of time that have been fractured. Um, we suffer in the West from a huge fracture of uh, being separated from the message of the kingdom and the messenger of the kingdom in our homes. For instance, the, the breakdown of the family is one of the hugest plagues that we uh, labor under. Um, Non-present parents or uh, absentee fathers, children in rebellion, and, and yet the Bible, the kingdom has the remedy for all of these things. We are seeing these dramatically being restored in our hometown of Jacksonville, and it's not because of us. There's a message through the worship that helps to bring this revelation into the hearts of people to cause us to want to demonstrate the kingdom, not just hear about it. So as Shabbat returns to our homes... By the way, I know there's many people watching, Paul, mm -hmm. single mothers right now that are right. watching right now or mothers of single mothers mm -hmm. uh, that uh, really feel for their, for their grandchildren. Sure. Well, the, but there's a restoration. There's a restoration. The kingdom has, the, all that we need is in the kingdom. And if we will just be humble enough to hear and see, and a lot of it is this restoration of the Jewish root. You can see the progress of what God has done through uh, hundreds of years, and even just in the last century of the, the return of the value, the, the word of faith movement, the priority of the word of God, the Holy Spirit movement. And he is restoring. And here's the thing, we, we can choose to be part of it, press in and be part of it, or we miss out. You know, we're just gonna, we're just gonna touch on this today because we have so little time, so much to talk about. We have to get together more, we frankly. Do? You, you've come out with an amazing new CD and DVD. I'm gonna hand you the DVD and I'm gonna keep mm -hmm. the CD. Roar from Zion. Just very quickly, this will change people's environment. It'll ch it can change their situation. Mm -hmm. Talk about this real quickly. And, and why? Is this some kind of you know, hocus pocus? No, because we take the, the physical, spiritual word of God, set it to music, which transfers with demonstration. Music, Jonathan, is the only thing I know of in the earth that affects our whole experience, body, soul, and spirit at the same time. And it's out of Zion, literally. We you did this in Zion. We recorded this in Jerusalem during the Feast of Tabernacles, the 70th anniversary of the rebirth of the State of Israel, the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, and on and on and on, and captured a sound with orchestra, millennial voices, Jewish believers, Arab believers, Christian believers from around the world who operate in an amazing anointing. And all together, this sound will transform any atmosphere. You've never heard anything like it. You've never experienced anything like it. We want to sow the DVD and the CD into your life as you partner with Jewish Voice to reach Jewish people and their neighbors around the world in some of the most difficult places in the world. And I want to invite you to become a monthly partner, and we'll also include this beautiful handcrafted shofar from Israel. It, it actually works. I'm not going to blow it for you now. But we want you to become a partner. We want to sow this CD and DVD, Roar from Zion, into your life. Here's how. Worship moves the heart of God. This is evident throughout the scriptures and is certainly true today. Paul Wilbur has led thousands of people in worship over the years, and now God has given him a new sound, which was captured during a live recording in Jerusalem. It's called Roar from Zion. As you help Jonathan in supporting Jewish voice outreaches to these lost tribes in Africa with a gift of $40 today, 
we'll send you Roar from Zion on both the audio CD and the beautifully produced video DVD. These new songs of praise and worship will be a blessing to your life and will change the atmosphere in your home. As you join Jonathan today as a monthly supporter of Jewish Voice, with a gift of just $30 a month, you'll not only receive Roar from Zion, but Jonathan is also including Paul's book, Touching the Heart of God, showing you how to engage with the kingdom of God and embrace God's calendar. In addition, you will also receive this ram's horn shofar and stand to display proudly in your home as a symbol of your love for Israel. Again, you'll receive this entire bundle of resources for your support of just $30 a month. And remember, your gift to Jewish Voice will provide medical care to one individual every month. Your monthly support is so vital this month. We need your help now to reach Jewish people. Please call the 800 number on the screen and let our operator know what level of giving you wish to participate in. If you prefer, you can always choose to give online at jewishvoice.tv or you can also give by mailing your gift to the address on the screen. Jonathan is encouraging you to become a monthly supporter as the need to help these dear people is ongoing and urgent. Remember, as a result of your giving today, you will be changing someone's life by giving them the gift of clean water, medicine, dental care, eye care, and the life-saving knowledge of Yeshua. Thank you in advance for your generous support of Jewish Voice and for making a difference in so many lives through your sacrifice. Now, let's rejoin Jonathan and Paul. Welcome back. My guest is Paul Wilbur, longtime friend, and I, I believe a friend for many of you. Many of you listen to him at home. Paul, I, you're fired up. I oh. just, getting together with you the last uh, couple of times, you are fired up about restoration uh -huh. and something new that God is doing in the earth mm -hmm. and is inviting us to be part of it. And, and that includes you. Let's get back into restoration. Mm -hmm. So restoration is one of these words, Jonathan, that our language, how we speak, what we say, is really important about the time we're living. You know, we talk about revelation all the time, and we can see through history where men had a revelation, but it wasn't time for it yet. I mean, we have those forerunners, the prophets. You know, many things that they prophesied and declared were waiting for the perfect storm, if you will, spiritually. And I believe, like I said earlier, that we have entered into this new time. What is it? It's the time to restore all things. So we're going to see our families restored in miraculous ways. Jonathan, we you are hear here. that promise? Uh, Did you just hear that? That's God for you. God is going to restore your family in the name of Yeshua, in Jesus' name. Just receive that right now. Mm -hmm. God's doing that. Amen. We're, we're seeing week after week as the word goes out with a an anointing for the time that we live in of children who are contemplating suicide. And I mean, not just one or two, but in, in a sanctuary, dozens coming forward and say, please help me. And he's restoring the centrality and the gift of family. You know, what is God doing in the earth ever since Abraham? He's been building a family. That's right. He's restoring his earthly family, and he's going to come back and, and to live with us, thousand-year millennial. There is so much. He's, he's restoring the fear of his name in the sanctuary. That has to do with what we sing, what we worship, how we invite him. There are ancient paths. There are ways to approach a king. He's restoring our understanding in praise and worship. Well, let, let's focus on that because okay. you, you just came back from Zion. You just came back from Jerusalem. Yeah. And there's something about Jerusalem There's a, in this restoration of all things sure. where the word of the Lord is, is going to come and already is now coming forth from mm -hmm. Jerusalem, from Zion. Right. Talk about, you just did a project in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And I think this is cutting edge. I think this is life changing. What happened? Why Jerusalem, first of all? Well, because the vision for it came out of, I was sitting there one day, minding my own business, 
reading, and, and I said, okay, I've only got 20 minutes. What's a short book I haven't read in a while? So in, instead of Jude or what, I went to the book of Joel. And by the time I got to the end of the third chapter, he said, in the last days, I am going to thunder from Jerusalem wow. and I will roar from Zion. And it so captured my imagination. I said, Lord, you know, it, is this, is it time? He said, yes, and I want you to assemble a dream team and I want you to go to Jerusalem during the Feast of Tabernacles and release this sound because it's time. And that's what we did. Wow. And, and so Jerusalem, the place, the place where the lion, it's the lion of the tribe of Judah, will roar from. That's, that's ahead. Let's get ready for that. Mm -hmm. And then specifically a, a, to, to worship out of Zion. Mm -hmm. And this is, this, is not, this is not just a Jewish thing, Paul, right? This is, this is for the body of Messiah. This is for everyone watching. Of course. Of course. And where we've been fractured in the separation of Jew-Gentile. Listen, I think a great picture of this, Jonathan, is a sword. Um, and you have a, a handle, a common hilt, a handle. But out of that handle emanates two blades. Um, and, and our friend Derek Prince wrote a book 50 years ago called The Parallel Restoration of the Church in Israel. And it caught my imagination back then. It's been the stuff of our worship ever since. Although we're Jewish believers, look, we're not going to see the return of Jesus without our Gentile brothers and sisters. Israel's not going to do it on their own. The church isn't going to do it on their own. But as we partner together, because there's a, there's a bride that's being prepared, mm -hmm. but Jerusalem is also, Jesus is also waiting for Jerusalem to say, blessed is he who comes. Oh, by the way, tabernacles is also very significant, the of Feast of Tabernacles, because when the lion roars, the Gentiles, the nations come to Jerusalem. Paul, talk about worship. Worship changes the environment. Sure. How people that are in need today, there's mm -hmm. people that are watching that need healing. Sure. There's people that are watching that need their, their children to come back to God, that need mm -hmm. financial provisions. Worship ties into all this. Sure. Yeah, and it's given to us as a gift. It's True worship, as, as Jesus was speaking to the Samaritan woman, you know, there's that Jew-Gentile connection again in John chapter 4. He said, a time is coming and has now come when those who want to be worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And so there is a deep connection here for us to understand that worship music not speaking specifically about shaha, what it means to worship, but worship music invites, it's like a heavenly calling card. And when he's present, when the spirit of God is present, he changes everything. When people ask me, how can I get this in my church? I say, you have to shift the atmosphere. You're not, we're not singing about ourselves and our needs. Let's invite the presence of the king. And if we will do that, he will come inhabit that place where you are. Stop listening to the news and, and your favorite 60s songs and invite his presence with some praise and worship and watch what happens in your home. It's Amen. Powerful. Paul, we could talk about this all day. We, we will. We'll have more time, but not on camera. This is, how to, this is, this is just out. This is the first you've seen this, right? Yes. CD and DVD, Roar from Zion, talk mm -hmm. about this. Everybody needs to get this. Every one of you, we're going to sow it into your life. It, can it will change the whole atmosphere of your home. Paul, talk about this. Mm -hmm. So out of the, the vision in Joel chapter 3, I'll thunder from Jerusalem, I'll roar from Zion. He said, gather yourself a dream team and I'll release this roar from Jerusalem. So there we were, Feast of Tabernacles. In Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, staring at the Mount of Olives, the landing strip where he's returning, and released this sound. Jonathan, not yet Jewish, not yet believing Jews, came to me afterwards with tears running down their face saying, what did I just hear? Please pray for me. There, it was a release of a sound that is now, there are, Arab Christians on here, Messianic Jews, um, Christians from around the world releasing the sounds of heaven. I believe, Jonathan, that this is a doorbell 
for heaven <laughs> that when you when you push open that, the gates, open, open the gates. The I've gates. never seen or heard anything like this before. It's cutting edge. It it will bring the presence of God into your home, and that's where it'll be. What, when the, where the presence of God is, there's liberty, there's freedom, there's victory. I want to get this out to you, both the DVD and CD. We want to we want to uh, sow it into your life. We need your partnership to reach Jewish people and their neighbors with the gospel. We provide medical, dental, eye care to Jewish people in Africa, some of the poorest people in the world, and they need our help. Why not become a monthly partner? If you do that every month, you'll be providing things like clean water and the gospel to Jewish people and their neighbors. If you become a monthly partner, we're, we're also going to send you Paul Wilbur's book, Touching the Heart of God. This is about embracing the calendar of the kingdom, very important, and a shofar. It's a, it's a real shofar. It really works. I'm not going to blow it now, but it's from Israel. These are all things we want to sow into your life to say thank you for helping us to bless the Jewish people. You want to bless the Jewish people? Become a monthly partner. Here's how. Worship moves the heart of God. This is evident throughout the scriptures and is certainly true today. Paul Wilbur has led thousands of people in worship over the years, and now God has given him a new sound, which was captured during a live recording in Jerusalem. It's called Roar from Zion. As you help Jonathan in supporting Jewish voice outreaches to these lost tribes in Africa with a gift of $40 today, we'll send you Roar from Zion on both the audio CD and the beautifully produced video DVD. These new songs of praise and worship will be a blessing to your life and will change the atmosphere in your home. As you join Jonathan today as a monthly supporter of Jewish Voice, with a gift of just $30 a month, you'll not only receive Roar from Zion, but Jonathan is also including Paul's book, Touching the Heart of God, showing you how to engage with the kingdom of God and embrace God's calendar. In addition, you will also receive this ram's horn shofar and stand to display proudly in your home as a symbol of your love for Israel. Again, you'll receive this entire bundle of resources for your support of just $30 a month and remember, your gift to Jewish Voice will provide medical care to one individual every month. Your monthly support is so vital this month. We need your help now to reach Jewish people. Please call the 800 number on the screen and let our operator know what level of giving you wish to participate in. If you prefer, you can always choose to give online at jewishvoice.tv or you can also give by mailing your gift to the address on the screen. Jonathan is encouraging you to become a monthly supporter as the need to help these dear people is ongoing and urgent. Remember, as a result of your giving today, you will be changing someone's life by giving them the gift of clean water, medicine, dental care, eye care, and the life-saving knowledge of Yeshua. Thank you in advance for your generous support of Jewish Voice and for making a difference in so many lives through your sacrifice. Now, let's rejoin Jonathan. Welcome back to our Ask the Rabbi segment. Today I'm going to answer some of your questions and I want to invite you to write to me. And uh, maybe your question will be uh, featured on an upcoming program. Uh, our first question is from Jeffrey, and he's writing from Casper, Wyoming. And he sent this email asking, is there a difference between Christian worship music and Messianic worship music? Uh, I think there is uh, a significant difference between what we call Messianic worship and Christian worship. The whole feel of Messianic worship is Hebraic. It's, it, it has an Israeli, often a Middle East uh, sound. Uh, we incorporate Hebrew usually into the song and we sing about uh, the God of Israel. Uh, we use Yeshua. And so there's a, a, a connection, as Paul Wilbur was sharing earlier, to the ancient, uh, to the ancient paths. Uh, it just, it's just a different feel. Uh, there's a prophetic dimension also. Uh, declaring that God is in the process of restoring Israel and the world. Uh, of course, we're worshiping the same God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. But I uh, encourage you to get a, a messianic uh, 
uh, worship CD. Get Paul Wilbur's, and uh, you you can you can feel the difference. It's it's really powerful, and I think you'll you'll find it really meaningful. So thank you for writing. The next question comes from Paula, uh, who has uh, sent in her question from Creston, Iowa. And Paula asks, I want to invite my Jewish friend to my church, but I'm worried that she will be offended when we sing songs about Jesus or our Savior. Do you think a Christian church service would be offensive to her? Well, Paul, I think you have to feel her out. Uh, however, if you've built a relationship with her, if uh, you've found that she's open to discussing Scripture with you, uh, you've asked the question, why are you here? What on this earth, what's going to happen to you after you die, and she engages uh, with those questions, then I, I think she's ready to go. Uh, I'd let her know. I'd warn her in advance that there's going to be uh, maybe the raising of hands. There's going to be uh, uh, worship uh, towards Jesus. Uh, explain who Jesus is, that he's Yeshua, uh, which means salvation. Uh, you j it, there's no right and wrong answer. You just have to build a relationship with the person feel them out, and uh, you'll know before uh, you invite them whether it's time to invite them or not. Just be sensitive. Be led by the Holy Spirit and be practical and wise. Uh, I hope they go. Send us uh, their name, and we'll be praying for them, and uh, God, God will prepare their heart. Uh, our final question comes from Marcus uh, in uh, Round Rock, Texas. And Marcus asks, are the teachers in a Messianic uh, congregation or church pastors or rabbis. And I think that's a matter of their own uh, identification. If they're Jewish believers in Jesus and they have the appropriate education, uh, often rabbi, which simply means teacher. Uh, but we have Messianic rabbis uh, that are leading Messianic Jewish congregations. Others are not from a Jewish background, but they've been called to lead a congregation that reaches Jewish people first and understands the context of becoming a Jew to the Jew, and they usually identify themselves as pastor because they're not from a Jewish background or they don't have the appropriate uh, educational or um, uh, vocational training for ministry uh, as a rabbi, and so they, they identify as a pastor. Again, Messianic Jewish congregations affirm that we are Jews who believe in Jesus and we haven't left our Jewish identity. So very often in our movement, you'll find the leader referring to themselves as a Messianic rabbi. Hey, if you have prayer needs or you'd like more information about our ministry, you can log on to our website. It's jewishvoice.tv, just one word, jewishvoice.tv. I want you to know as I close that God loves you, and so do we. So we're here for you. As we close the program, again, I want to remind you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122, 6 says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love thee. So I speak prosperity in your life as you pray for Israel and the Jewish people and reach out to that Jewish friend, coworker, or neighbor that God has put into your life. Until next week, I'm Jonathan Bernis saying shalom and God bless you.